Now you probably know me from having hosted a whole bunch of Talking Point episodes. So in this video, my fellow Talking Point hosts and I are going to recap some of our favourite episodes from 2023. Tell you a bit about some of the behind the scenes stuff that you never got to see on air. Consider it our way of saying thank you for your support because we hit over eight and a half million views on YouTube and TV. And you also want to stick around to the end of this video because we're launching something very special that I'm going to need your help for. The cannabis episode was really about the do's and don'ts for Singaporeans when we go to Bangkok, which is so often because at that time, cannabis had just been decriminalised in Thailand. I had a shock basically when I checked in my hotels. When I went downstairs, the entire street was lined with little trucks selling cannabis. As a matter of fact, they are just right next to the food stalls. No one, absolutely no one is betting an eyelid. Anybody can walk up there and buy a joint because they don't check your ID. Uh, there was edibles in cannabis as well, whether it's gummies or even chocolate cake with cannabis. It was a bit of an eye-opener, I think. A lot of people that I met asked me, did you try? Did you try? What did you try? So for the record, me and the crew didn't try anything. <laughs> in the concert tickets episode, the most memorable moment would have been meeting the scalper, which none of you saw face to face, but I did. And I can't say anything more about him. One of the things he said really blew my mind out of the water, which was he bought so many Taylor Swift tickets, but didn't plan to sell them because he believed that Taylor Swift was the devil. He doesn't want people to watch Taylor Swift. Then we're talking about 387 tickets, if I remember correctly. By the end of it, I think he planned to sell 300, but 87 he was willing to burn. Of all the episodes I did last year, the most memorable one was about coffee. We wanted to find out where we're getting our coffee from. So we went to visit Indonesia and went to visit the coffee farms. First of all, coffee farms are not located in the city. So we'll fly into a big city like Jakarta and then on the map, it'll say five hours to the coffee farm. But guess what? A five hour journey would often take seven hours. And along the way, there was an accident. It was already 8 p.m. Sure, it's going on, traffic not moving. So by the time we reached our hotel, it was 11 p.m. at night. One of the most challenging things as well was that they only have squatting toilets. These squatting toilets are all bucket system. There's no modern sanitation, you can't flush a toilet. You squat, you use it, grab a bucket, you flush it with water and you do it several times. So that was a little bit exciting. But the upside was that along the way, in the countryside, we came across so many places that had amazing views. Knowing what goes into each cup of coffee, I gotta admit, I have a, a newfound appreciation for my cup of coffee because there's just so much hard work involved. One of the more special episodes that I worked on in 2023 was kids in rental flats. Why it's so meaningful to me was because of the connections I made with the kids that were on the episodes. I'm curious, like, why did you have such a strong connection? With Haifeng, he was a complete ball of energy. He was like a mini Sheldon from Big Bang Theory. He had all these facts about the world. But then when I sat down and asked him, like, okay, then what do you want to achieve when you, you grow older? He was like, you know, I want to buy a bigger house so that my parents can live in a bigger house. You know, we have more toilets, more rooms. He's so young and he's thinking about how he can help his parents. The fact that they agreed to talk about their experiences, I hope that it can inspire other children to, you know, also want to achieve big dreams because no matter where you come from, you know, the world is your oyster. For me as a reporter, these are the kinds of stories that keep me doing it. You hopefully see the impact of your storytelling in the wider community. So for the water heat episode, it was really about uh, installation and using licensed electricians and plumbers because we found out that many homes, while they work fine, over time, there could be wear and tear and, and that wear and tear will happen faster because the incorrect wiring was used. And recently, my water heater started to leak and I knew exactly what to do. I told the uncle that the water heater is upstairs and the uncle's like, how you know? I watch Talking Point. You know, be kind to your electricians and plumbers because some say it's a tankless job. 
So for the elder care episode, I stepped into the shoes of a nursing care assistant for half a morning. I started work at six in the morning, I got briefed, and then you are just thrown into it. And we had a strict schedule because the patients had to be bathed, they had to have their breakfast, and they had to be spoken nicely to. Some of them may not be the easiest to handle. I was communicating with adults who sometimes acted like children. Bitter. Bitter. <laughs> okay. Give little bit, bluff him. It also made me realise that as I age, who is going to look after me? Most of us hope that we can fall back on our family. So my big realisation for this episode is that I need to take very good care of myself so that I can defer as much as possible the problems later on. Of course, there is our favourite episode for the year, duets. I was surprised by how many people really love their duets. I had duets every day for two weeks to see kind of what effect it would have on my body. And guess what? We found out that duets don't lower your cholesterol, but they don't increase your cholesterol either, although they do have a lot of sugar in it. So that was quite interesting. This duet episode was so popular that we thought, well, why not do something a little bit extra? So we invited some of our viewers to come for an actual duet taste test. So many people have said, oh, count me, you know, let me come and join you. I love eating duets. I can tell you which are the best. Believe it or not, they were not as good as they thought they were. <laughs> the egg freezing episode was something that stuck out to me. Basically, it's about whether or not egg freezing is worth it. Before I worked on the episode, I was actually considering it because, you know, I'm 35 and I feel like I'm at that stage where I need to decide whether or not I want to have kids now or later or should I freeze my eggs. So what's your decision? <laughs> I knew you were going to ask that. <laughs> Got personal real quick. Just weighing out things in my personal life with family, with health, with work. I met a fertility expert to talk about where I'm at. So based on that and based on the costs, I have decided that I won't freeze my eggs. I am quite grateful that I worked on that episode because it pushed me to find out more about whether or not it's something for me. So no little Munas at this point of time. <laughs> Thank God! So the biohacking episode was all about finding out if I could really find ways to biohack my fitness journey and my goals. It was also my first time trying out cryotherapy which was insane because you step into this chamber I can't hold this camera straight It's negative 66 degrees Celsius You're just shivering in this chamber uh, for three minutes which feels like an hour When I watched the episode and I saw him do the cold plunge It was just so intense I wouldn't have been able to do it For a cold plunge I've tried it and I didn't last two seconds I went in and I was like nope too cold Another interesting episode was the one about food delivery riders. At first we thought, make me a grab delivery person. But then my boss thought about it and say, hmm, you sitting in a car, not so exciting. I think we gotta make you work harder. So we had planned for two days of food deliveries. And guess what? On the first day, my guy, his bicycle broke down. That was totally unplanned. Something's wrong with his bike. So we're a little bit stuck out here. So we almost thought, oh, shall we just stop the experiment here? But it kind of wouldn't have been as interesting. So we decided to help him rent another bicycle so that we could go on and do deliveries the next day. But as usual, we kind of just uh, went with the flow. And so that became a real part of the story because uh, that was totally unplanned. Just like my producer, Charmaine, who is coming to work now. <laughs> a big shout out to all the producers that you never see, but they really go down on the ground, find out all the information before we can put together this 25 minute story that you get to watch on air. Super shy, super shy, but wait a minute while I make you mine. <laughs> shy. <laughs> Thank you. One clap. It involves me doing a fitness regime, it involves me dancing, traveling to South Korea. Hin hin. And maybe pursuing my dreams of becoming an idol. All I can say is that the topic really matters and things are about to get dirty. So my first episode in 2024 is about hot pot or steamboat as older people like me call it. How healthy exactly is hot pot? If you wait till the very end and you drink the yummy soup, is it going to give you bad cholesterol or high blood pressure? Find out.
Coming up soon is yet another cheesy Talking Point episode because yes, this one is all about cheese or processed cheese. Is it really all that great or is it just beautiful? <laughs> it's another debris, I guess. So increasingly, we're trying to build our city to support those with disabilities. But I wonder what it's like if you were visually impaired, if you could not see, and to live a day of their life moving around the country without that privilege of sight. I want to do a story about those clubs where the males will have to dance and then the female customers will put flower garlands on them as a way of reward. And each garland is like a heck a lot of money. It's like thousands of dollars. And my dream is for me to report on the episode and for my co-host Steve to go undercover as a male dancer. Steve, please do it. I would love for Steve to do this episode. Will he be recognized? Mm. You know, I often wonder what Diana gets up to in her free time, but now I think I know. Have you been hanging out at flower clubs? So Diana, in fact, I have a challenge for you. I say, can you learn a sport in 20 days? Maybe like badminton, boxing? Learn it to the point where you can compete with a professional athlete and almost be as good as them. Steve, the GOAT, going on another food challenge. How about we do a vegetarian challenge? So only vegetarian meals every day for two weeks. I know how much Steve loves his meat. So Shrey, if you think I can't do it, you are so wrong. I'm game. Vegetarian diet, you and me Shrey, let's do it. Overall, for all our hosts, because I'm competitive, I think there should be an episode where we compete for one winner. What will it be? You decide the challenge. <laughs> So if you've been watching Talking Point, you know it's not just us hosts who get to try out stuff. Very often we invite you, our viewer, to join us too. I recall meeting some of you while eating low-fat ice cream, tasting durians, even tasting insects. Some others got their mattresses and pillows clean in our episode on bed hygiene as well. So we are making it official. We're launching a Talking Point testing panel. That's right, we want you to be a part if you're adventurous, don't mind trying out food, products, we want you to join us as part of the team where we can film everything down on camera and you can be part of the show. All you need to do is click on this link and sign up right here. Hope to see you soon. And as usual, if you have ideas for the show, things you would like us to investigate, drop us an email, talkingpoint and mediacorp.com.sg. In the meantime, keep joining us on CNA Insider and don't forget to like and subscribe.